I grew up uh, northeast Missouri, uh, a little town called Paris, and I uh, actually grew up in a, in a Walmart family. My mom worked for Walmart for 35 years. She started as a uh, hourly associate a cashier in Lexington, Nebraska. I'm sure some of you all have been there. Um, worked her way up to be a store manager in the 90s and uh, late 80s and early 90s. And uh, I always grew up in that thinking, I'm never working for Walmart. That's crazy. They work weekends. I do all these crazy things. I'm, I'm going to go to school and go do something in the meat industry. Love meats judging. Actually learned meats judging in the back room of a Walmart store when we were uh, cutting meat back in the 90s. So kind of full circle, but I uh, went to grad school and ended up at Walmart. And I thought, hey, I'll be there for a couple years figure it out and uh, uh, move on to do something else. Here we are 13 years later, an, an unbelievable career around this project and what we're doing. And I love my job. I think I've won the lottery of getting the coolest job in the world um, because we get to do this program. So one of the cool things about it, like I said, is around the sustainability piece of it. <clears throat> and I'm gonna tell you a little bit of history about sustainability and kind of how we got to where, where we were a decade ago and where we are today. I can remember I was new in the company and uh, the, the sustainability then kept coming up and we, uh, I got to go on this trip, one of my first Walmart trips, we went to Chicago. We we're gonna go talk about sustainability in Chicago, right? It makes a lot of sense. And so I'm sitting at a corporate office and there's golden arches there and whatnot and everybody's talking about how, how we're gonna get into sustainability. And uh, one of the farmers from Iowa was there that day, blew everybody's mind by putting one picture up. And it was a grass waterway in a, in a row crop on the side of a hill. And he, he showed how they used a grass waterway. And I thought to myself, what? That's it? A grass waterway, everyone's doing that back home. They, they taught us that in the third grade back home. The sustainability thing maybe isn't as hard as I once thought it was. And so young in my career, I was just a kid still. Still kind of am. And um, I was like, well, we're going to go take this thing. We've got this figured out. So we spent the next decade working back buying boxed beef, trying to tell the rancher and farmer's story, but through our boxed beef supply chain. And this isn't no fault to the industry or the, the packers or whoever it may be. The fragmentation of the industry caused it extremely difficult to tell that rancher's story, to go tell that farmer's story on what they were actually doing. I knew it was happening. I grew up around it. I see it, I could go back home, I'd talk to my friends, that it was happening, but we couldn't tell the story. So we struggled with that for a decade, Sydney, and, um, and we really did until this program came along. And in the last 18 months, we've made more progress on telling the farmer and rancher story, the sustainability story of this industry, than we've ever done before. And, you know, Doug earlier on the video talked about uh, regeneration. And we're a regenerative company. I'll tell you what, when I go to a meeting in Bentonville at the home office, and there's probably two or 300 of me that have different categories. I have beef, they have bicycles, they have towels, they have coffee, you name it. There's all kinds of people. And I just laugh when I go to them because I know I've got the leg up on them. I've got all of you all behind me, and all i got to do is go tell your story because we have the most regenerative industry of all. I know that. Um, all we have to do is go tell a story. And so when I go to those meetings, I get really excited. But, Sydney, um, when you started with us and we started working on this project, we would get on calls and we're like, what are we, what are we working on? What are the details? What are, I mean, literally somebody said, what are, what's the end game here? What do we do? And that's when we got to a point that we understood that we were focused on outcomes, not on practices. Mm. So everybody, everybody in here has a, comes from a different place, a different ranch, a different part of the country. Your practices are all different. What you do in South Texas may be different than what you do in Nebraska, for sure. I uh, know some folks in the hall, or earlier talking about rain. They haven't had much at all in South Texas in the last few months. So, we knew that was important, so we, we were going to be focused on the outcomes. And what, what outcomes do we want to work on? And so we started, started sitting down, talking through those, and some of the important ones, right? Can we work on soil quality? Absolutely. We all know the importance of soil quality. Without that, we don't have anything. Water quality and availability. Biodiversity. Greenhouse reductions. Very simple. There's a million different ways you can get there, but those are the, the outcomes we need to be focused on. 
That's when we started going down the path and uh, what Sydney and, and Grant are gonna talk about here in just a little bit about how we developed it from there and how we developed the system to get to where we are today. But uh, JB, what I can tell you is, again, when I walk into those meetings about regeneration, I just, I just smile and I walk in knowing I'm gonna have the best story of all of them because I got a whole bunch of people behind me. That's phenomenal. It's phenomenal. <laughs> Grant. Talk to us. Well, first of all, um, I've had the privilege of getting to speak to a lot of y'all uh, across the country at different meetings, uh, different, different events. And the one thing that I kind of always lead off with and telling everybody is thank you and that that thank you comes from Bentonville. And according to Doug McMillan's video there at the beginning, I hope all of y'all know now when I've been saying that for the last three years, that that is very sincere and very true. We definitely appreciate what y'all do on a day in and day out basis to provide that food, fiber and shelter for Americans and, and really for the world with our exports. So again, round of applause for y'all. Thank you. So I've been with you, Ryan, uh, almost three and a half years now, I think. Um, Appreciate David and the team taking a, uh, I don't know, I'll call it taking a chance on me, I guess, really. Uh, like I said, I, I don't fit the, the corporate mold. They hired me, well, the first time they called, I was in a feed truck feeding hay in February. And then when David called me and offered the job later on, it was the COVID year, so it took a little time. Uh, I was on the back of a horse gathering bulls out of the pasture. So um, when Ryan says that I'm one of y'all, I truly am one of y'all. and. I'm not, I'm not throwing a feather in my hat here, I'm, I'm, but I am gonna say that I think it was the smartest thing or one of the smartest things Walmart has done for the industry because we are so connected now and have somebody on the inside that knows exactly what y'all are doing day in and day out, like I mentioned. So uh, David, thank you, and, and Martine, thank you for being here. Uh, Bob, appreciate the opportunity to get up here and talk just a little bit. Um, when I started, I had no idea that sustainability was going to be part of my job description. Director of Cattle Management and Procurement does not scream sustainability and regeneration. <laughs> uh, I felt, I don't know, maybe a little bit like Sydney at the beginning, like, what are we, what are we doing? What is, what is my role here? I realized, like Ryan just mentioned, sustainability is not complicated. We do it every single day. We're the ones living with the land, not the ones living on the land. He talks about the outcomes. You know, we're, we're open to different practices. We're specific on the outcomes. Every one of y'all have practices that you're doing every single day that goes to every one of the outcomes that Walmart's looking for is becoming a regenerative company. So the sustainability work that I've done is actually probably, I'm gonna tell you it's been the most rewarding because I've been able to come to farms and ranches all across the country, you know, Wendy down at Marfa and Tucker's up in the Sand Hills and all these other wonderful places that I've been, I'm able to go back and share with our leadership the things that are being done every day to make our environment better than what it was when we found it, being sustainable so that we are profitable and able to pass it on to the fourth and fifth and sixth generations and the whole regenerative piece, the environmental quality and stewardship that you guys are doing. We have those conversations in Bentonville, and I mean, I had no idea three years ago, Ryan, that we would ever be where we are at in that story today and, and collected the, the information and just the stories that we've been able to share in the, and, and talk about what this industry does every day. Um, at the very beginning, we had uh, some listening sessions uh, with, with producers. We had some with cow-calf producers, uh, backgrounders, feed yards, and kind of one of the overall sounding things that we heard when we started talking to them about the, the sustainability and what type of practices they're doing and what are the things that they like to implement, they were all looking for like technical assistance and then money, right? Putting in additional pipeline or additional fence lines so that you can better manage your, your grazing lands. Those aren't something that has an ROI in that first 12 months. That's, that's decades long return on investment, right? So it's how can we do addition, how, how can we put additionality to the great things you're already doing and being able to pay for it. So I was looking for the technical assistance where we needed some help on trying to decide maybe where the tree grove should be planted or where the riparian strip should flow or where we need to pipe additional water to and then how do we fund those things. So 
we kind of set out on a, on a track, Sydney, and uh, we found some great companies that we have partnered with to do things um, in, in that realm, with, like with Agspire. I think you'll probably talk about here in just, just a little bit on connecting ranchers to that technical assistance, looking for public funds to help implement some of those practices. Because at the end of the day, we all know that we're doing great things, but every one of us in this room can do one more thing on our ranch, on our operation to get just a little bit better. And hopefully with the partnerships and, and with Walmart scale and, and, the, and the contact and the, just the, the transparency and the open communication within this program, we can connect those dots and help everybody take that next step and do just a little bit more. And you know, one of the things that I find really helpful with our, with our sustainability team back in Bentonville is they understand we're gonna meet people on their journey on where they're, where they're at. Mm. Not everybody's in the same spot in this regeneration and the sustainability movement. So we meet folks where they are and then it's like, okay, so Bob always says, you know, we're better together. What can we do next to get even better by working together? And probably pass it over to Sydney and let her talk a little bit on it. Um, the, other, the only other thing I'd probably say is, um, and Ryan, I hope, I, I hope this is all right, I won't steal your thunder. Um, I think for the first time, and I'm new, three and a half years isn't very long at Walmart. I think for the first time in history, Walmart was recognized at our sustainability uh, milestone summit that we have in the fall. That was uh, fall of 22, I believe that's right. And then beef was actually highlighted at our annual shareholders meeting this year and got some tremendous acknowledgement for the people in this room for this program. One of the ranchers, the Jones family, uh, was actually honored guest of Doug at that shareholders meeting. And that just tells you how important this program is, how important beef producers in the country are to Walmart and how much we appreciate what you guys do. I believe that deserves a hand. So I'm Sydney Reese. Uh, I work for Prime Pursuits. Um, and if you guys, I don't know if you noticed my job title, but it has a lot of commas in it. And sustainability is at the very end. What that basically means is at the beginning, I also had no idea what this sustainability journey uh, would take us on. And I honestly think that when I first got hired, and it was my first couple weeks, months in the program, and BJ approached me and he said, hey, I need you to do some sustainability uh, go to some sustainable meetings with the Walmart folks and figure out what we need to do. And I was thinking, much like Claire and other speakers, this will be a short-term thing, we'll get it figured out, get our reporting done, it'll be great. Two and a half years later, it takes up most of my time, um, and it has been a really interesting journey. So when we started, Walmart uh, was, was in a big meeting um, and called us in uh, with some NGOs and some other experts in the field, uh, some other people in the beef industry that were also working on this. And I'm just sitting in the back quietly thinking about it and thinking most of the stuff that they're talking about, we're already doing. Mm. So we need to figure out how to relay the amount of information that I can get from what our ranchers are already doing and be able to put it into Walmart's reports. And so that was kind of the first part of my sustainability journey was being a translator, using, taking the rancher's terminology and what practices we were doing on the farm and figuring out how to put them into Walmart's reports and outcomes. And along the way, we got to take the Walmart sustainability team to ranches out, out in the field and, and it was really cool. And as we developed, we got to the point where we were thinking, okay, what else can we do? We have now been able to report what is already being done out there. So how can we help you um, as Prime Pursuits make improvements or be better or, or maybe accomplish goals that you've thought about but didn't quite know how to do it, didn't have the funds available? And so we got really um, involved in some place-based projects. Uh, one we have with corn farmers, uh, at, with John, um, at DAR. You kind of heard him talk a little bit about that. We've done stuff with uh, technical assistance, as, as Grant has said, and, and technical assistance is something that was really wanted. And that is coupled, obviously, with funding and funding availability. And so that leads us to one of our major projects right now, 
Uh, we started with a, a pilot project in partnership with Walmart that we've been able to expand upon where we are connecting Prime Pursuits producers with the ability to um, have access to technical assistance with a company called Agspire. And so I want to introduce everybody, and this has been one something that we've been working really hard at, and I would love for as many of you to take advantage of this as possible. So we have Jared from Agspire. And so what Prime Pursuits is doing it, with, in conjunction with Agspire and, and our, our friends at Walmart is being able to provide information and um, access to consulting on, on funding opportunities through NRCS and other uh, opportunities for funding. Um, so, so Jared and his team at Agspire are really experts in that field. So if you've ever had problems with your NRCS agent not giving you as much information as you want or trying to make your applications more competitive, Jared is the guy uh, to contact, and Prime Pursuits is offering this as a service to our producers, and so we really want as many people to take advantage of it as possible. Uh, you'll be seeing emails, newsletters, and webinars uh, coming out from Agspire, so I strongly suggest um, if you guys have time to take a look at those, um, we're doing this as, as something that can hopefully, hopefully help us in, in Walmart in reaching our regenerative goals. I think you could mention there just real quick um, a couple of the people that he, he's worked with that are in the room. If y'all have questions or something later this afternoon, uh, Wendy's sitting back here, the Tucker's from Nebraska, the stores are from Nebraska here, I'm trying to think. I may, I've probably not seen everybody and I can't see a thing with that bright light in my eye. But those would be some of the folks that y'all could reach out to to kind of see um, what that relationship's been like and, and how this service at Prime Pursuits is going to be. Uh, be, be promoting, you know, how, how that can help you all. Uh, I think it's one important thing. So I talked about how we went and went down this path of sustainability for a long time and hadn't made a ton of progress. The company has a 50 million acre goal um, across all the different uh, categories and um, a lot of different people are involved. Um, beef within Walmart got tasked with 12 million acres of that. And of the 12 million acres, this program has already over, over delivered 8 million of those 12 million acres. But remember, we're only 465, or around 500 stores, which is about 6% of our total stores. So 6% of my business, of where my cattle are coming from, make up 8 million of the 12 million acres. That's impressive. And we, we have a line of sight to have even more of that because of what you guys are doing because we can go tell your story. So uh, hats off to you guys on what you're doing and the work we're working on. Uh, we're making a huge difference that we have not been able to make in, in a decade. Mm, fantastic. Uh, Mark, quick question. I'd love to show a video. Would it be on this screen or the two outside? Great, fantastic. Could we show a video and then have you all up here really quick? So uh, as Sydney said a moment ago, her, her title has a lot of commas in it. And uh, when I joined two and a half years ago, uh, Bob and BJ, we, Sydney and I met on the phone and I, I saw her title and I, I came from marketing and advertising and playing drums and such. And I'm like, what are we gonna talk about? And, uh, and we, we, Bob asked us to take on this sustainability project to tell the stories. And we dug in. I've gotta say, uh, it's among the most rewarding work I've ever done in my career. Um, there's a fellow in the back back there that I met years ago working actually on a project back in Atlanta, a sustainability project. And I, I gotta be honest, we would pull double all-nighters and work on the weekends and everything trying to formulate a good story. And it's hard to tell a story when a, a great story is not there. And when we got our head around this and got our, uh, the realization of what you all are doing, what you were doing that people just don't know just in your day to day lives, it was powerful. So we dug into it hard. And as I said, as I said earlier, many of you have welcomed us on your ranchers at three, three in the morning. Many of you made us breakfast at four in the morning. You've been amazing, We've done 15, 18 or so, and can't wait to do more. But we'd love to show a, um, we'd love to show a quick video if we could, let you see it. Some of you may have seen it, others have not, uh, and let you all react to it. Is, is that okay? Could we, um, could we show wildflowers? A chance?
Jim Keegan knows something these cattle do not know. They are manicuring one of the most bountiful wildflower destinations in the world. Welcome to Keegan Ranch located in Bear Valley, Western Clusa County, California. Bear Valley is famous in the month of April because of the wildflowers. The tapestry of over 100 species of wildflowers draped across the 2,500 acre Keegan Ranch is not only beautiful, but also life-sustaining. It's a home to many beehives. They thrive with the cattle. And it's a mutual understanding between the cattle and the, and the bees. The cattle eat the grass down where it exposes the wildflowers, where the honeybees can pollinate and keep food on the table. Jim Keegan realized that he needed to preserve this land with help from the California Rangeland Trust. I'm Alyssa Rowland. I'm the communications director for the California Rangeland Trust. And in 2016, California Rangeland Trust partnered with Jim Keegan to conserve the Keegan Ranch. The Keegan Ranch is unique because it was one of the very first um, funded easements through NRCS's Grasslands of Special Significance program. And the reason that it was funded was because uh, the soils here are very unique. It's, uh, there's a serpentine soils throughout Bear Valley. And what that creates is an abundance of wildflowers in the springtime. Through Jim's careful stewardship of the land, his cattle are manicuring one of the most bountiful pollinator habitats in the entire world. Over 100 U.S. crops rely on bees as pollinators, and so without cattle, we don't have bees, and without bees, we don't have a food supply. Thankfully, Jim Keegan understands the real beauty of wildflowers. Over 1,000 ranchers like Jim are helping Walmart reach its sustainability goals. Together, we are feeding a more sustainable future. I mean, to be able to stand out there at 7 in the morning, and it was, it was already 183 degrees, but it was an amazing interview, and to hear the lady say, without, without flowers, we don't have bees, without bees, we don't have a food chain. None of this would happen without cattle. How amazing is that? Thoughts? Uh, my thought is, we, that's just one of many videos you all have done. And it's incredible to be able to take those videos and talk to somebody that's not been on your ranch, not been anywhere out there, and go show them exactly what we're talking about. It makes things real. And it goes back to what I talked about at the very beginning. These things seem, may seem very simple, um, things that you do every day on your ranch. But just like when I was in Chicago at that sustainability meeting and they showed a grass waterway, not everybody gets to see that every day. And that's the difference maker here. And how do we take these individual stories, go tell them, and then like Grant and Sydney talked about, continue to do place-based projects, ty those type of things, and feed that information back to you to see how we can help you improve your ranches to the next step. Because there's always gonna be something we can go do further and, and do better just to improve your ranch and make your, live, uh, your livelihood even that much better. And it goes back to what Doug said too, um, regeneration is just about leaving this world in a better place than, than what we found it. Could, could we see one more? Do we have time? Could we see one more, everybody? Uh, um, Alex, Alex, are you in the room? Alex, there's Alex. Um, Alex Crone, everybody. I'd love, to, I'd love to show you this was a fantastic day spent out with, with Alex and his team. Uh, it was life-changing for me. Um, what a powerful story. Let's watch this really quick. Imagine being responsible for every blade of grass on a ranch the size of Delaware. I'm Alex Caron. I'm president of Singleton Ranches here in New Mexico and California over this 1.2 million acre vast enterprise. Our, our philosophy is uh, sustainability and it all starts with this. 
grass. Grass production, consistent grass production. At any given time, 100,000 acres are resting without cattle for grass reestablishment and regrowth. We have a large cow herd that we make sure that we have plenty of grass in front of them, behind them, and also have grass in the bank. If you take a look at the ground cover, this is turf ground that's been very well taken care of. We have to have a good root system. And how you develop a root system is over years of season of use. And the season of use is the time of year when you use the grass. To prevent overgrazing, water is dispersed to encourage cattle to move. We're here at the Blue Storage, better known as Mr. Blue. It's part of our concept of developing water and scattering across the whole 1.2 million acres. Mr. Blue, along with 10 of his friends, supply water every mile, which allows our cattle to disperse and utilize the forage uh, more evenly. Under the watchful eye of Alice Carone, fewer than 50 people are needed to take care of the 10,000 cattle on the 1.2 million acres they call home. Our philosophy ends up translating into quality, natural beef that's marketed through Prime Pursuits and eventually the Walmart beef case. The sustainability decisions we make today will help us all flourish tomorrow. Over 1,000 ranchers like Alex are helping Walmart reach his sustainability goals. Together, we are feeding a more sustainable future. All I can say is uh, Morgan Freeman has nothing on Alex. <laughs> Fanta um, thank you so much. Any, any additional thoughts? Just, I, I, I would just like to say as a storyteller, it's an honor to be able to tell you all's stories and, and, and share this to, to, to answer some of the goals and needs that you all have. Love you to tie it up. Yeah, no, thank you all again for having us up here. Um, we're extremely excited about this program um, and all the things we get to tell about your all's story, your, your product and what you all do every day. Um, if you see Grant around this afternoon or this evening, make sure you catch him. Um, I, I'm sure he'll be at your ranch at some point or uh, interact with you at another point. But uh, thanks again. Thank, Thank you. you.